we have uh, looked at various dimensions of energy. We have talked about energy and environment, energy and development, energy and quality of life. And in the last class, we also talked about energy and equality. The last dimension that we need to cover before we go into the subject of energy economics is energy security. You must have read in the newspapers many different issues related to energy security. So, let us try and find out what do we understand by energy security. What is energy security? What are the parameters that affect energy security? What are the options to enhance energy security? And we can look at energy security from the point of view of a country or of a state or of a city or a region. Normally, we take, we always talk about this at a country level or a national level. So, let us define what is energy security. This is a, um, uh, this is a graphic which shows different dimensions of energy security and we will talk about this in uh, part by part. So, when we talk of the energy security, the parameters that could be, we could look at the security in terms of the uh, end use sectors. That means, the different kinds of demands that we uh, have, the national electricity system. We can also look at what is the um, mix of the national energy use the domestic or the fuels that we have, we can have imported uh, fuels, we can use hydro, we can look at the nuclear fuel cycle and then we can have globally traded fuels. So, all of these dimensions need to be thought of. Uh, when we talk of a definition of energy security, a simple definition is that we would like to see that we have uninterrupted provision of the vital energy services. And this is of course, a priority for every country. So, we would like to make sure that we, whatever energy we need for all our activities, we have access to that and that there is no interruption in that. There are different dimensions of this. This has been classified into three different uh, parameters. One is the robustness, the second is the sovereignty and the third one is the resilience. Let us discuss each one. Uh, Robustness involves the sufficiency of resources, reliability of the infrastructure and stable and affordable prices. So, in the case of uh, robustness, that means if there are some fluctuations, if some changes are there, we should still be able to provide the energy. Sovereignty means that the country has control over the energy use. So, it that it's, uh, we need to have protection from potential threats from external agents. And resilience means the ability to withstand diverse disruptions. So, in the case of sovereignty, if all of our, if we are, if the country is highly dependent on oil imports and those imports are all coming from a particular region, if there is some problem which happens within that region, and our oil uh, supply is affected, then we have a problem in terms of security. So, we have various strategies in which we can try to enhance and increase the sovereignty. And the, in the case of resilience, uh, recently there have been a large number of different kinds of disruptions like floods, we have uh, different kinds of, you have a tornado, you have some uh, extreme uh, event and which the energy infrastructure gets affected. And resilience means that how quickly can we bounce back, do we have a diversity in terms of things. So, in all of this, if you look at this graph, this uh, chart, it shows us the kind of different um, possibilities. So, in the case of robustness, we can try to minimize uh, the, uh, the risks and we can have a diversity in terms of the different kinds of supply. We can also try and see that whether we can manage and have flexibility within the demand. In the case of sovereignty, one of the things that we can do is we can try and ex we can diversify the supply. So, 
if we are getting imported oil, we can make sure that we are getting this oil from different regions of the world. We can have long-term contracts. We can also see, in this case, mm, uh, we have a situation where uh, ONGC, through its wing, has been actually buying different resources and mines in different parts of the world. So one of the things is you can acquire facilities in different parts of the world. And uh, so these are some of the kind of specific uh, responses that we have. In the case of resilience, we can try to see, we can have redundancy. That means we can have more sources of supply. We can try and see that we can modify some of the demands. And uh, so there are a whole host of different things that we can do. If we want to talk about the energy security of any particular country, one of the indicators that we can do is we can uh, understand and see what percentage of our supply comes from, uh, comes from outside. So whether we can have domestic supply and uh, so we can look at the percentage of our, if you look at India and we look at oil, uh, a significant proportion of our energy use is based on oil. And our oil production has more or less stagnated between 30 to 40 million tons per year. Most of the growth which is there in oil is coming from imports. And if you look at the percentage of energy that is imported as a proportion of our total primary energy supply, you plot that over time, and I'll show you that plot, you will find that the percentage, our dependence on energy sources outside has actually been increasing. And this is not a very uh, good situation, so we need to think in terms of substitutes. We've been looking at the possibility of using biofuels, we are looking at renewables, we are looking at domestic fuels, and this. And so this is the other thing that has been, when we talk of energy security globally, uh, there is this whole, if you look at oil and oil prices, uh, many of the developing countries have actually been affected by the fluctuation in oil prices. Until recently, oil prices have only been increasing. In the last decade or so, we have seen drops in the oil prices. Now, if you look at this plot, this plot shows the trend in oil prices with time. And you can see there is not, there are no very clear cut patterns. But if you look at all of these arrows which are there, these arrows all relate to actual political events. And those events have an implication. There are some particular blockades, there are um, wars, and these have always had an impact in terms of oil prices, sudden spurts in the prices, results in. Uh, adverse impacts to economies which are dependent on imports. So when we think in terms of any strategy for energy security, we need to make we need to make sure that our country is sort of immune to some of these. And this is the these are the kind of things that we look at this. On a shorter time frame, if you uh, on a longer time frame, if you see these are the kind of oil price variations which are there, and you can see oil price variation. Many of them get linked to political events, and you can see that this uh, automatically has an impact on the economy. And uh, you can uh, look at some of these trends in more detail. I leave that to you. But uh, basically, what you will find is that um, when we think in terms of this, uh, we talked about these three pillars, the robustness, the sovereignty, and the resilience. And uh, in looking at this, you can see uh, what kind of uh, supply do we have, what proportion, a large proportion of the fuel, uh, oil and gas is globally traded. And this obviously will contribute to um, the problems of security for many of the other countries, for many of these countries. In the case of nuclear also, in many cases, we are dependent on imports for the nuclear fuel. And uh, in the case of hydro also, there may be issues in terms of water availability. And in renewables, of course, the variability of renewables. So when we think in terms of uh, in a regional context, when you look at a 
context where there is a disruption and a resilience, we have to see what proportion of our energy supply is coming from near the region. Because in case the centralized infrastructure is cut off, how do we provide that? So these are some dimensions that we can analyze when we think in terms of looking at different aspects of the energy system. Uh, I talked to you earlier about this import share and you can see that over the last, from the 1990s onward, if you look at the percentage share of imports in our overall energy supply, you can see that this is sort of monotonically increasing and this is not a very nice trend. This is something that we need to see how do we get substitutes for uh, oil and uh, we are recently we have been also importing some proportion of coal. Um, one of the things that we may also see that even in the case of one of the strategies that we have adopted is where we have gone for renewables. But even in the case of renewables, when we look at the kind of solar photovoltaics that we are, uh, uh, we are actually installing, a significant proportion, almost 90 percent of the cells and modules that we are installing are coming from imports. And this also can have implications in terms of energy security. We are in a um, interconnected world and if you see this is showing you a uh, sort of uh, the um, uh, this shows the trade in oil and oil product and you can see very clearly um, the magnitude of these arrows shows the volumes and you can see that almost all the oil is coming from the Middle East and you find that of course there are geopolitical issues related to this because of this this is a region which is under in turmoil often when there are problems this affects this. Uh, the, this affects the availability of oil, it affects the prices and it affects the economies in many parts of the world. So as we plan our energy systems for the future, we would like to shelter from these kind of impacts and we would like to see oh, what are the kind of options that we can do. Um, so we have looked at uh, the dimension of energy security and we said that every country would like to have a strategy where you would like to have a a robust, sovereign and resilient energy infrastructure so that we can provide uninterrupted uh, supply of energy for the nation's development. Uh, so with this we cover all the different dimensions and the linkages between energy and the rest of the economy. In the next class we will start with talking about energy economics and looking at how we can uh, assess different projects in terms of the economic uh, viewpoint. Thank you.